Are you worried about the future? That's a big question, isn't it? One that maybe you have to sit with for a little while and think about. But as you're thinking about that question, let me add a caveat. You just found out that all the money you had saved up for the future has been stolen and you can't get it back. Now I ask you again, are you worried about the future? Or how about you just found out that your parents were tragically killed in a car accident while you were at school today? Are you worried about the future? Where will I be in three months, six months, or a year? A lot can happen in a year. But the truth is, even without tragic circumstances, if we really spend time thinking about the question, are you worried about the future, the answer is yes. Because the more we think about that, the truth that reveals itself is that we can't control the future, and that makes us worried and anxious. We don't know what's going to happen later on today, much less three months, six months, or a year from now, nor can we really control what that will be. You might think, well, next week I'll be in my office at 10 o'clock doing my work because that's what I do every Monday at 10 o'clock. We don't really know. Disruptions and tragedies and blessings can come even when we don't expect it. So those tragic circumstances, they don't really bring something new to the equation. All they do is they allow something that's always true to bubble up to the surface and remind us of a simple truth. I'm not in control. We don't like that truth. It scares us. And so we spend most of our time throughout our lives doing our best to set things up so that we can control things because that makes us feel safe. Well, fear not, you're not alone. In our disciple, in our gospel reading today, the disciples are in the same situation. They thought they knew what was going to be happening in the future, but then Jesus starts to speak to them, and all of their future ideas and plans come crashing down, and then they become afraid. They're worried about what's going to happen. So the context of our gospel reading today in John chapter 14 is that Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples, and in the previous chapter, he's just explained to them a few things. He's mentioned that one of them is going to betray him, so they become concerned about who that is and begin to defend themselves, surely not me. Then he gives the command to love one another as he has loved them. And he tells them that he's leaving, and where he is going, they cannot follow. Quite a marked turnaround from the first thing he said to his disciples, which was, follow me. And now he's saying, I am going somewhere, I'm leaving you, and you cannot follow. You can imagine the disciples are worried. The future they thought was so certain with Jesus around, all of a sudden, it disappears. The bubble bursts and they're left wondering what's going to happen. After all, Jesus is the most important person in all of their lives. They've been walking around with Him and spending time with Him and listening to everything He's had to say for the last three years. And they think that He is the one the one who is going to come and save them from all of the problems of the world. Now, we know that they're right, but not in the way that they think. And so when Jesus says, I'm leaving and where I'm going, you can't follow, you can understand why they would be scared and worried. So much so, Peter pulls a classic Peter and says, Why can't we follow you? I would die with you, Lord. And then, of course, Jesus tells him about the rooster crowing. But he does clarify, he says, that where I'm going, you can't follow for now. And that becomes key when we get into chapter 14. This is why chapter 14 begins with Jesus' words of assurance. 
let not your hearts be troubled. His disciples are scared because the plan of salvation in Jesus is unfolding and it is not at all something they can understand and certainly not something they expected. But you don't have to think too hard to put yourself in that situation, do you? The truth is, we've all experienced that sort of thing. Something we thought was a sure thing for the future all of a sudden looks shaky or disappears. And we're left feeling like nothing makes any sense and I can't rely on anything because the thing I was relying on is gone or the person is gone. Our future plans completely disrupted. And people will say, oh, just have faith in God and believe, and, but it's not like you can just turn that off. It's like, oh, okay, I didn't understand before, but now I understand. I'm never going to be worrying again. We all know that's not the way it works. This really hits you when tragedy strikes, because the truth that oftentimes we can ignore when everything is fine and good comes bubbling to the surface. I remember this for myself as uh, I was, I think, in my second year as a pastor, so this was about five years ago, I read a story about a pastor in Iowa who just, it was a regular day, he was finishing up his work, and he was locking up the building and going to leave, and a man who had troubles, who was known to the congregation, came to see the pastor, and the interaction ended up with him being mugged and killed. And it really hit me because it was just a regular day, and all of a sudden, he was gone. It made me think, well, what if tomorrow I'm leaving my job, just a regular day, and something like that happens? And there's really nothing I can do about it. So we understand this worry. But the reality for us as sinners and saints, those who follow God, is that worry about the future is an attack that the devil wages upon us and our own sinful flesh to get us to stop trusting in God to get us to forget the very promises that we just bore witness to today in Henry's baptism. That no matter what, and that means everything, no matter what, God, who's in control, has saved you. Your future is assured. But our own sinful flesh and the devil try to get us to worry so that he can get us to focus on something else to try and ease our suffering. So we pursue all these different things in order to find that security we so crave. We seek it from money. Maybe we seek it from having enough social and personal connections, being loved and liked by many people, and many other ways, but not God. And the danger of persistent worry is it causes us to stop trusting in God and look elsewhere well, in our text, the disciples, they're right there. They're worried about what's going to happen because Jesus has just sort of pulled the rug out from underneath him, and now nothing seems for sure. Where's he going? Why is he leaving now? Why can't I follow? What's going to happen to us? You can imagine their thoughts. So what does Jesus do in response to their worry? He assures them with His Word and His promises. His first response to Thomas's question is one purely of comfort. Says, Thomas says, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus' response is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And often we read that as sort of a, a scandalous narrow answered statement, only Jesus. But in the context of this passage, Jesus is speaking these words to assure His disciples, you're on the right path. I've placed you there already. I'm with you. I am the way. And that's significant. It's an interesting response because normally if somebody says, show me the way, how do we know the way? What are you going to do? You're going to pull out your GPS. You're going to give them direction. But Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to show you the way, I'm going to teach you the way. He says, I am the way. That changes everything. That means that those who follow Jesus are not on a path of self-improvement, 
to become better human beings. It means that He is calling you to Himself because when you are with Him, you are on the right path. He is the way. Baptism today is a great example of this truth of our Lord's mercy. I can assure you that Henry didn't learn any new information between being born and being baptized. He didn't learn how to read a map or a compass. He didn't learn the right set of rules on how to live. And yet, even still, he is brought by his parents who are given the authority by God to speak on his behalf. And God receives him as his own because he is the way. It isn't about what you know, it's about who knows you, and that is Jesus. It's a gift purely by His love and grace, not something earned. We don't do anything. Henry was sleeping the whole time. But it's the work of God Himself that He does through His love and grace for you. Now, of course, This statement isn't enough for the disciples. They're still scared. So Philip demands some more assurance. He says, Lord, show us the Father, and then we'll stop being afraid. That'll be enough. Have you done that before? In your conversations with God, maybe you're dealing with a difficult situation, and you just think, you know, God, if you could just give me a little bit more, if you could just tell me this one piece of information, then I'll be good then I won't be afraid, then I won't worry anymore. You know, maybe I've been witnessing to a family member who has lost their faith or doesn't know Jesus. If you could just tell me, I know it's the Holy Spirit's work, I know it's your, but could you tell me the day and the time? That'd be great. Then I wouldn't worry about it anymore. So what does Jesus do in response to this question about, show me a little bit more, give me a little bit more? Well, his response is a caring rebuke, much like parents do to their children. It says, Have you not been with me this whole time? If you have been with me and you have seen me, then you have seen the Father. You have everything you need in me. There's nothing more needed. But the irony of the text today is exactly that, that the leaving of Jesus is the necessary piece in order to accomplish the very assurance that I now give to you in His Word that He is going to take on our enemies, those things that separate us from God, those things out in the world and those things within ourselves, sin, death, and the devil. He goes to wage war on your behalf to do the work that we could not do and then give it to you freely. That's why He's saying to you today, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's not a statement about how you can't find it any other way. It's an assurance that you can find it in me who is here with you now. You say you do not know the way. You are on the way as you ask that question because I am here with you speaking to you. He knew worry would strike us and anxiety would become something that would worry us and tempt us away from Him. So as I said in the children's message, we didn't go find Him. We didn't make that choice. We won't make that choice. He came and found us. He made Himself known to us in His Word and in the sacraments in order to assure us that everything is going to be okay, that you don't have to worry about the future because you now have a sure and certain future in Him. That no no matter what happens in this life, Jesus has defeated the enemies that plague you, rose victorious from the grave as we celebrate in this Easter season, and has given you the gift of connection and life with God forever, freely as a gift. So regardless of what happens in the future, Be assured. Cast your worries and anxieties on Jesus because He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you have come to the Father through Him by His gracious and loving work given to you. Please pray with me. 
Heavenly Father, you have given us the great gift of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, who assures us of your love, your care, and your provision. Have mercy on us and forgive us when we worry, and rescue us by the gift of your promises in your Word and sacrament. To that end, draw us into your Word so that we may hear the blessed and wondrous news that you love us forever, and that we have, had, that we have an eternal place which you are preparing for us in our Father's house, and that we will go and be with you in eternity. Assure us when we worry to cast our anxieties on you, and remember these words of assurance given, that if God is for us, no one can be against us, and in Jesus, God is most certainly for us. In your name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again to make everything new. Amen.